In my previous video, I went over what OpenSea's MPI is, the features it provides, and how to install it. In this video, I'm going to go over an example of using OpenSea's MPI to speed up a parametric study. The OpenSea's model that I'm going to be using in this video is a simple nonlinear cantilever column subjected to various intensities of ground motion excitation. So I'm going to quickly go over to the actual um, tickle script for this model and explain it a little bit. All right, so here I am at the tickle script for the cantilever column. And uh, as you can see here, it's a two-dimensional model. It has a Steel 01 material model for the wide flange section and a fiber section representation for wide flange sections. Um, additionally, I'm using a force beam column and I'm just using distributed integration with Lobato um, integration and five integration points. And it's like 13 feet tall, uh, which is typical for like a uh, building story. Um, the gravity load on it is roughly half of the axial capacity of the column and applied as a vertical load and the corresponding mass is applied in the lateral direction. Um, so I simply applied the gravity, um, set the set the load constant and set the time back to zero, applied some damping, um, applied the ground motion using uh, this read record uh, procedure, which is available in the OpenSeas wiki. And yeah, simply applied as a uniform excitation in the X direction. And finally, did some uh, static uh, dynamic analysis uh, using a little bit of a convergence handler here that um, splits the analysis step. I create a couple of recorders for no displacement and base shear envelope and because I'm looking for the uh, maximum displacement uh, response of the earthquake. And lastly I just run the analysis and write the uh, result of the analysis to a file. So. Um, this example script, as well as the uh, other example scripts for the parameter study, uh, will be available um, to download from a link in the description. So that's the model I'll be using for this example. In order to demonstrate the benefit of OpenSeas MPI, and by extension OpenSeas MP, I'll be subjecting the model to a suite of ground motions of various intensities, comparing the total analysis time in series to that in parallel. Now there's two main ways to do this. There's modulo assignment, or modulo, depending on how you want to pronounce it, and there's dynamic assignment. Uh, there may be other ways to do this, but these are the two ways that I'm going to be going through today. Modulo assignment divides the number of tasks evenly between processors. So if you have 10 tasks and you have five processors, each, process, uh, each processor will only get two tasks and it utilizes all the processors for running the analysis. So each one is assigned um, task to run. Uh, one of the downsides of it is that it requires a fixed set of parameters. So this works well if you have a fixed set, like, hey, I wanna run these 10 earthquakes with these five different intensities. Works fine, you can just plow through them that way. Uh, so the other way is dynamic assignment. Dynamic assignment, instead of dividing the number of tasks evenly, it divides more or less the computation load evenly between the worker processes. Um, I say worker processes because not all processes are running the analyses. There's one processor that has to act as the coordinator uh, in this scheme. It also, the huge benefit of dynamic assignment is that it allows a dynamic set of parameters, so the parameters can change um, throughout the analysis. So you can assign tasks, and then get results back from those tasks and then assign different tasks. So it's kind of a balance between series and uh, parallel. All right, so here I am at the uh, parameter study using modulo task assignment. So this is what it would look like. So I have, uh, first of all, I have a source read record.tcl. That's the uh, procedure script from the OpenSeas wiki. And uh, I have a nested for each loop, nesting through the ground motions and scale factors. 
So the way this works is you have some sort of counter, um, so sort of integer count, started at zero, or really any number actually. Um, and then each time you run a new analysis or go through a new combination of parameters, you increment that count. And what you do is you check to see if the remainder of division of the count and the number of processors is equal to the process ID. And if that is the case, then you run the analysis. Um, additionally, you'll see here I have this couple of if statements here, if PID equals zero. Um, this is just so only one processor uh, displays the total duration of the analysis and runs a, a post-processing file that I have that uh, consolidates all the results. Additionally, I have this statement here, if get NP is greater than zero, then do a barrier. Uh, this is needed if you want to have it be um, compatible with just OpenSeas and OpenSeas MPI slash OpenSeas MP. Um, so basically I can run this just in OpenSeas and it'll run in series, or I can run it in parallel with OpenSeas MPI. So I'm gonna start out by just running it in series. Um, so I'm just going to open this up here. OpenSeas parameter study one dot TCL and it's going to take a while, so I'm just going to take a little coffee break here. Feel free to skip ahead to the end of the, this portion, but figure for, uh, just for effect, I'm just gonna let it drag out here. As you can see there, um, there's some analyses that are having difficulty with convergence and, and failing. I think uh, we're about at the end here. This might be the last ground motion. Nope, nope, there's, there's more, there's more. Total of 10 ground motions in this example, um, and I'm running it at 10 different scale factors. So it's a total of 100 analyses. Still a couple left, actually. There we go. So total analysis duration, 157 seconds. That was like two and a half minutes. So that is not too bad. But again, this is a very small model um, and not a whole lot of earthquake uh, analyses, only 100. So um, if you had a, I don't know, let's say a 10 story frame model, it'd probably take hours. So how can we speed this up? So if you're running with OpenSeas MPI, each process will have a unique processor ID and the number of processors will be assigned a number other than one. So let's say if you had uh, three processors. So in this case, 
uh, the first one right here, or count zero, it would be zero divided uh, remainder of division of three, which is going to be zero. So that's going to be assigned to processor zero. And then uh, it would increment, so then it would count be one. One remainder division three uh, is one. And then it would be two. Two uh, modulo three is two. And then three modulo three is zero. So it would go back to zero. So it would go zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So let's see how long that takes. So I'm going to open up another command window here. And I'll do, let's do four. Open C's MPI. And for parameter study one dot TCL. So one thing you may notice with this is that there's no um, error messages being put to the screen. Uh, there's no warnings from non-convergence. This is a kind of a quirk of OpenSea's MPI. Uh, in order for OpenSea's MPI to work and not show like a header, OpenSea's header for every single um, subprocess or every single process, basically the standard error channel of OpenSeas gets redirected to null and all puts commands go to the standard out channel rather than the standard error. So that's just a little technical detail. If you do want to see the convergence errors, you have to use the log file command um, in OpenSeas and redirect all of that to files. So there we go, total duration, 52 seconds. Not quite 25% uh, of the 157 seconds. It's more like a third. So uh, there's a few reasons for this. One, um, it could be that one processor was hung up a little bit more than others, um, and that could have extended the duration. Um, additionally, because it's writing to a hard drive, it could be throttled by the hard drive write speed. Um, additionally, it's not the only thing I'm running on my computer. I mean, I'm recording my screen right now, so that can take some processor um, I guess resources. So regardless though, it's a lot faster. Alright, so now I'm going to show the other way to do it. Parameter study 2. So this method, you can't run this in series. Um, I have a little error thing that kicks you out if you uh, try to run it in series. So I'll show that I have a little macro here. Um, that must run in parallel. The reason for that is because it divvies up the um, the analyses and the coordination. Uh, so the coordinator is process zero, and then the workers are processes one through um, n minus one. Uh, so if you have uh, four processors, you only have three workers. So it looks pretty similar as far as the uh, for loop goes. Um, however, you'll see that it uses these uh, send and receive commands. So the way this works is the coordinator loops through and each at each uh, combination of parameters, it receives from any process a process ID. So this basically f finds an available worker. And so in the worker loop, there's the corresponding send command. So it sends to process zero its own process. So once it does that, then it sends to that processor the um, ground motion file and the scale factor. So here it's receiving from process zero uh, the data. Um, and then if the data is not equal to done, which I'll get to in a minute, um, it will assign the data and it'll, it'll split it into the ground motion and scale factor. So this is just taking the list and it's unpacking it into these variables. And then, as in the other uh, parameter study method, it just runs the cantilever file and wipes the model. So the, the coordinator, after all of the um, tasks have been assigned, then it goes through a loop where it sends a closing signal. So it, 
it goes through a, just here's a simple for loop so it's going from i to np and it's receiving from any of the processors a process id and sending this word done so this signals to the worker hey we're done you can exit and it exits out um, and then as before the only only processor zero keeps track of the time and then it says the total analysis duration and runs the post-processing script. And that's about it. So I'll run this. Um, and I'll use the same number. So it's MPI and let's do four parameter study two dot TCO. So now you can see it's going in uh, going in threes. So the speed will probably be a little bit longer than the modulo method because with the same number of processors, one of the processors is being used as the coordinator. So that's going to um, reduce the number of workers from four to three. However, it does balance the load more evenly, so it might not be as bad. So there we go, 60 seconds, just a little bit more than the 52 seconds of the uh, modulo method. So I'm just going to run it in uh, with five processes, just to kind of see what it's like with the same number of workers. It may even not be very much difference because my computer only has four cores. Uh, they're they're dual threaded, but um, again, other processes are running on my computer. Oh, 51 seconds. So with uh, four workers, it was a little bit faster than the Modulo method, not by much, um, but uh, it was faster. So if you have severely unbalanced loads, this will help to uh, speed up your analyses. Um, if you don't have severely unbalanced loads and they're all predetermined, it's usually fine to just do the Modulo method. Um, you're not going to uh, have much of a, I guess, slowdown from from unbalanced loads. Right, so I mentioned uh, that there's a post processing. So I'm just going to go into that for a second here. So in the post processing, um, I mean, this is just an example of how you can do post processing in Tickle. Uh, results from a parameter study and consolidate it into like a CSV file or something. So um, so again, this example will be available at a link in the description. Um, the important thing here is that because I'm writing to one CSV file, this can only be done by the by one process. Um, so it's easiest just to have that be assigned to processor zero because there's, you're always going to have a processor zero, um, even in series. So uh, a couple just notes that are important. So when you're running things in parallel with OpenSea's MPI or OpenSea's MP, if you don't, if you're not careful about file management, uh, you can end up crashing the program. 
So what I mean by that is, it, for example, in here in cantilever.tcl, um, the read record procedure, it reads a AT2 file or a pure ground motion file, and then it writes to a just a simple data file with just the acceleration points. Um, if you have the same data file name for every single analysis, then what you're going to end up happening, what's going to end up happening is multiple processes are going to try to access the same memory in your computer, and this will cause the program to crash. Uh, so to get around that, um, if you have just temporary files, you can just have the processor ID in the temporary file. So that's what I do here. Um, and that settles that. When it comes to recorders, um, same sort of thing. Uh, make sure that the recorders have a unique uh, location on your computer. So an easy way to do this is to just have a nested folder with the uh, parameters and uh, put the files in that specific data directory. And as long as you have, as long as each processor uh, has unique files to write to, um, then you're fine. It can read from, multiple processes can read from the same files, that's not an issue. It's when you're trying to write to the same file. So that being said, I'm gonna quick go over to MATLAB and show you the results, just for kicks. All right, so here I am in MATLAB. Uh, it's just a very simple file that just reads in the results from the CSV file that was created by the post-processing file and splits it up into uh, results for each ground motion and plots the displacement and the intensity factor, or the scale factor. So let's run this. Ignore this warning, I just moved some stuff around. So here's just the displacement response. So pretty typical IDA plot. You have some linear response at the beginning and then it kind of weaves and, and then eventually flatlines. Um, so yeah, this is uh, how you can run parameter studies uh, such as IDAs in parallel. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to try out the examples shown in the video or adapt them for your application, the link will be in the description as I mentioned before. And if you have any questions or encounter any issues, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to respond. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.